Um, so hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Danielle Daw, I'm the Adult Services Librarian here at the library, um, and I am your host for this evening. I'd like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather tonight is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. I also want to thank the Friends of the Halton Hills Public Library and CFEW Georgetown for their support of the Halton Hills Lecture Series. Now, before we begin, um, we just have a few housekeeping items. Um, once again, the Q&A for tonight's lecture will take place through the chat box. Um, so if you are on a computer, um, go to that bottom menu in Zoom and you'll be able to find the chat. Um, now, if you're on a tablet or phone, it is probably under more options. Um, Paul has said he is happy to take questions throughout the presentation. So if you think of something, um, feel free to throw it in. Um, we just ask that you direct your questions to everyone rather than a particular individual. Um, and that way we can all see what's coming into the, uh, the chat. I also want to note that tonight's presentation is offered in partnership with CFEW Georgetown. Um, so for members of the group, um, your business meeting will follow the lecture. And finally, uh, we are recording tonight's presentation for YouTube and it will be available later this month. And now it is my pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker. Paul Nguyen is an award-winning activist and filmmaker from Toronto. In 2004, he created janefinch.com to change the negative stereotypes about his community. Within a short period of time, his grassroots project became a national success story. Paul's impact is recognized by political and community leaders across Canada. In 2006, he spent a year working with CBC's The Fifth Estate, following the lives of gang-involved youth in the Gemini Award-nominated Lost in the Struggle. He is also the recipient of over a dozen awards and recognitions at both the local, provincial, and national level for his role in fighting stereotypes and acting as a role model and mentor for at-risk youth. Paul is also featured on the Government of Canada's website as a noteworthy Canadian of Asian origin owing to his valuable contributions to society. Um, and we are honored that he has joined us this evening. So without further ado, here is Paul Nguyen. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm really uh, happy to see everyone, uh, you know, clicking in and on the Zoom and interested in learning a little bit more about my neighborhood, Jane and Finch, and my website that I created a long time ago called janefinch.com with my uh, poster right here, you can see. <laughs> so today I will just uh, share a little bit about my story and how I use the internet and video to kind of, uh, you know, change how people perceive, uh, how the public perceives Jane and Finch. Now, a little bit about my background. Okay, my name is Paul Nguyen. I was born and raised in Toronto. I uh, uh, grew up in Jane and Finch my whole life. I still live here. I'm actually in Jane and Finch right now. <laughs> you can see all around in Jane and Finch. Uh, I went to all, all the local schools uh, in the area, public schools, middle school and high school. I, I also went to York University and I took the film program there, graduated in 04. Now, my parents are uh, known as boat people, so they're the, among the Vietnamese refugees who uh, escaped Vietnam uh, to, to uh, you know, in search of freedom. And they were welcomed in Canada, to Canada in, a, in about 1979 in February. So that was their first winter. Uh, and they never had Canada goose back then. So <laughs> you know, they're walking around in uh, Toronto with some slippers and stuff in the snow. So it was a, a really new experience for them. But uh, Canada has become our home, and Jane Finch is my home, and I feel really blessed to be, uh, you know, can Canadian and to grow up in in this country where we have all kinds of freedoms, and uh, growing up in the Jane Finch community among different cultures and having best friends of different colors and backgrounds has been a great experience and uh, helped me grow as a person and just to understand the world and how other people are. Okay, so. I will talk about how I use the video and internet to engage youth in the Jane Finch community. Now, don't mind me, I'm gonna <laughs> look at my cheat sheets uh, so I don't forget anything. Now, why did I want to use the internet and video to change things in Jane Finch? Well, first of all, Jane and Finch has kind of an uh, interesting reputation, let's just say. So if you don't already know, Jane and Finch has almost a kind of like an international reputation and uh, not for the very best things. We've had a history of, uh, you know, issues in the in the community, crime, poverty, all those sorts of things. Uh, even the United Way had, uh, used to label Jane and Finch as among the one of the 13 priority neighborhoods in Toronto. I think they changed the name of that. They wanted to change it to, to something nicer, but I think it's called uh, Jane and Finch is classified as a neighborhood improvement area now. 
which means that uh, the city wants to focus on the community to try to reduce crime and uh, improve services in the area. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are working hard in the community to try to better things. We have a lot of nonprofits, a lot of volunteer groups, organizations, uh, young people, residents, a lot of people that just want to contribute and make Jane and Finch a better place. Because, you know, growing up in the community, I've seen a lot of obstacles and witnessed, you know, things like racial discrimination, uh, being discriminated against based on your socioeconomic uh, uh, you know, status, where you come from, where you live. You know, even I would meet some friends or invite some friends to come to the neighborhood. And a lot of them would be like, hmm, Jane and Finch, uh, is it safe there? <laughs> That's the first thing they say. I'm like, well, I've been here my whole life. And I understand that there's obviously a lot of news reports and sometimes people can buy into the media hype. But uh, I, I wanted to, that's why I created a website to show people that Jane Finch is not as bad as you think. I mean, I used to walk around the neighborhood with my dog at like 2 or 3 a.m. In, in the morning and I felt perfectly safe, actually. I actually feel downtown Toronto is a little bit riskier. <laughs> a lot of the interesting characters down there. But yes, Jane Finch is my home and I, I love it a lot. And, uh, you know, I started uh, my website in 2004. And basically, we used rap and hip hop culture to kind of interest the youth because a lot of the youth are interested in the, in the music and hip hop is not just rap music but hip hop is like graffiti art it's break dancing it's all kinds of art forms spoken word poetry a lot of different uh, uh genres can fall under hip hop culture so that's a really strong culture that exists within the youth in the Jane Finch area so what we did is you know I, we got video cameras and we just help people to do rap videos. And then, uh, so a lot of people got interested in the website. This is like, now imagine this is early 2004. So let me give you the status of the internet back, back in 2004. So 2004, there was no social media, no Facebook, no Twitter, <laughs> no YouTube. So what are we gonna do? Uh, so when I created, when I bought the domain name janefinch.com, I actually I bought the domain jane-finch.com because the actual janefinch.com was taken by a lady named Jane Finch who lived in Kitchener, Ontario, who's a real estate agent. But years later, I finally got the, the official domain, but we, we survived for a while. And uh, yeah, basically, you know, I, I started my website, website as a, it was just a one page homepage about Jane and Finch. It's just like, hey, this is Jane and Finch. We have one or two videos and we wanna show the world that Jane and Finch has a lot of young people that are talented, that are artists, that have a lot to say. And uh, we started off small doing rap videos. So, um, you know, some of the challenges, there's lack of resources. You know, how do we get people involved, especially youth in the community where a lot of them are coming from, you know, difficult situations or you know, struggling families. And, uh, you know, I think volunteering is actually a luxury for some people. And uh, it's, it's not, if, especially if you have parents that are, you know, not, never home, they're working two or three jobs to provide for the family. You know, it's really hard to carve out some time to, you know, to give back or do something extra. But surprisingly, especially amongst uh, Jane Finchers, I think they're among the most generous and loving community because they understand the struggle and growing up and just understanding and relating to everyone that we're in the same boat and we're just trying to make things better. So I think that that uh, the ad that For sure, it's like I got it from my mom. Uh, <laughs> during Halloween, she would buy the most expensive candy, even though sometimes the kids will steal the bucket and run off. But <laughs> she doesn't get discouraged, and she still tries to do it every year. Um, but anyways, okay, back to you, Jane and Finch. Okay, so I've made the website to kind of uh, capture the history, the news, the local news, and kind of all the multicultural events uh, to try to kind of showcase to the, the larger public about Jane and Finch, because a lot of people have the misconceptions about the community because they probably heard it from like, you know, getting it from the news reports or hearing all the, the headlines, right, from the media. Usually there's like a shooting here or something happened there. And we've kind of developed a, you know, a negative reputation over the years. Now, I can't blame the media entirely because they have to cover the news. These things do happen. But so what the website tried to, tries to do is we actually act as a counterpoint to the mainstream media which is showcasing all the positive stories that necess necessarily wouldn't get coverage by the mainstream media because, you know, unfortunately they work on the motto, like if it bleeds, it leads. So that obviously generates a lot of attention. If it's like a, you know, a, some tragedy or something in the community, then it gets, it gets highlighted obviously. 
But uh, so I took it upon myself and, you know, just recruited a, a ragtag bunch of volunteers to kind of work together and make the community into a better place. <clears throat> Actually, I have some photos. So let me share my screen and just take a quick visual tour of Jane and Finch. Let me see if I can share. So bear with me one second while I learn how to do this. Okay. All right, can everyone see the picture? There's a nod. <laughs> yes, okay, perfect. So this is actually at the intersection of Jane and Finch. Well, it's a dirt road basically, but this is a photo from 1957. So uh, pretty much no one's there. I think just squirrels. And I, I saw photos of some cows uh, at the intersection. We don't have any cows anymore, but uh, back then they used to rule the, the neighborhood. <laughs> so there's one picture. Let me just scroll through another one. This is another view, uh, Jane Street looking north from Finch. So it's a really, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> probably people using horse, horse buggies back then. <laughs> this is an interesting photo. This is 1968. So now we have an overview of the Jane Finch intersection. And that actually is the famous Jane Finch Mall, you can see. And uh, there's only one high rise there, so, which is interesting because now Jane Finch is comprised of like so many high rises. So there's like thousands and thousands of people living in just like a, a few square kilometers, even though our population is probably similar to Houghton Hills. I think you guys have like around 80,000 ish or 60 to 80, let's just say. Jane Finch has the same population size, but we're like all like packed in like sardines. So very, very different living conditions, very, very different lifestyle. You know, I used to live in an apartment and all my friends would be, you know, on different floors and we'd play Frisbee in the hallways. You know, we're not supposed to, but, you know, things like that. So the lifestyle is very different, but also it's, you know, everything's very close by and convenient. You can walk to school, walk to middle school, walk to high school, walk to the mall. I mean, once I went to a, a, a class in grade six and there was a, a girl who had who wore the exact same outfit as me, same colored pants, same shirt. I was so embarrassed, but I said, ran home, changed my outfit and then ran back to school. That's how close it was. So that's really nice. All right, let's see if there's one more picture. And here is a picture of Jane Finch today. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me go back to my Zoom. Okay, so this is a... About five years ago, someone took a drone and flew around the neighborhood and took a nice aerial uh, video of the Jane Finch. So that is uh, Jane Finch now, The all the buildings you can see. Actually, Paul, I think we still have the old one here from uh, 1968. Oh, okay. You know what? Let me... Okay, there we go. So now you know what I'm talking there about. Go. Sorry about that. So that now we're looking at uh, York Gate Mall. Jane Finch Mall is on the opposite side. And the tallest building there is known as a Palisade Building. And uh, so you can see a lot of people, a lot of buildings. Everything is very, very dense. <laughs> so actually, Jane and Finch is the intersection right there, right in the middle. And, uh, you know, has a worldwide, actually, international reputation. But actually, if you walk there, you're just going to see a lot of people lining up, uh, you know, on, waiting for the bus to go to work, you know, coming to and fro, you know, going to school. There's not actually much happening at the actual intersection of Jane and Finch, but you'll just see like a shopping plazas, the mall and a, a buildings all around. All right, let me cancel that out. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Okay, I will just talk briefly about what it's like to grow up in, a, in the Jane Finch community. So, so you can con contrast that with maybe some of your experiences growing up in like Halton Hills and in a similar area uh, in, in the, that area. So Jane Finch obviously started off as a rural area, just like Halton, like maybe 100, 200 years ago. And uh, eventually there was a lot of housing quickly built up, I think in the 60s and 70s, uh, because there's influx of uh, Im immigrants. So a lot of immigration and they quickly built up a lot of buildings and housing and there was like uh, social housing was starting to be developed. So uh, the, the, ex the population exploded in the 70s and then um, so we have a lot of density, but unfortunately there wasn't enough like infrastructure to support that kind of growth. And also, you know, uh, over time, you know, there was a problem with drugs coming into the area and things kind of deteriorated from that point. And uh, so we do have a, a large um, section of public housing and, uh, you know, and we have um, a lot of like single, single parent families. There's, uh, you know, higher levels of poverty and crime than, than the average, uh, you know, in, in the city. So unfortunately we get, 
you know, we get labeled and uh, the, the community has experienced like kind of a lot of uh, stigma, a strong stigma stigmatization. And even growing up as a kid, I felt the stigma, you know, I would go to different neighbor, neighborhoods and visit friends or family or go to school. And people are like, are you from Jane and Finch? It's kind of like, like a black mark in a way. And people kind of automatically it generates thoughts of like, are you part of a gang? Are you involved in something? You know, are you just another poor guy? Uh, so a lot of a lot of people have misconceptions about uh, residents of Jane and Finch and also in the community itself. But actually, what I want to share through my website is that Jane Finch has a lot of successful, remarkable people. Um, some of them I can uh, name right now. Like we have a, if you watch CBC at six o'clock, uh, uh, the the host Dwight Drummond is actually a guy who lives in Jane Finch, down the street from where I am, and he used to live here and he grew up here. He, uh, he told me he lived in, I think he lived in public housing for a time and uh, he worked his way up. His mom uh, disciplined him so he wouldn't get into trouble. So we have a lot of successful people. We have a uh, famous artist, uh, Julie Black. She's a famous singer, I think Juno award winning and uh, just a lot of other people that uh, come from Jane and Finch. So we have a lot of successful people and I think those stories need to be highlighted. And that's why I did the website is to kind of, uh, you know, just showcase the youth who are from the area, showcase like their art, their talent and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's see. So Jane Finch, there's a lot of uh, multicultural festivals. We have like a Driftwood Community Festival where uh, different, uh, different uh, community groups can, you know, share their food, their customs. That's an annual thing. We have Kitty Caravana. So it's our version of the Caravana from like downtown, but there's like a Kitty version. People can dress up in their costumes and stuff that happens in the community. And uh, there's all kinds of stuff like parades, food fests, a lot of things happening in the community. <clears throat> so now contrasted with some extraordinary moments I have here in my cheat sheet. So grow up, growing up in Jane Finch might be a little bit different from Halton Hills, I would venture to guess, because there are some moments where I remember maybe walking home from school and then I see my neighbor or a neighbor, there's a SWAT team outside with their rifles drawn. Uh, so those are sites and I remember, so that didn't affect me that much, but I remember that it was after school and I saw a lot of kids actually getting off the school bus, getting off the TTC and they're walking home and they see this site, you know, like young elementary school age kids. And uh, it makes me kind of sad in a way, uh, sad that we also become desensitized to these kind of moments. So that's why, you know, I think kids growing up in Jane Finch have a different view. Um, they kind of grow up with the... Uh, uh, a more, I guess, developed radar, you know, just to be aware, like having that situational awareness because of these kind of things that happen that you have to be aware, you have to kind of look, look. Uh, I wouldn't say look over your shoulder, but you have to be just hyper aware because you're living in a community that the safety is not con a constant thing. Whereas I would imagine uh, some of our friends on the Zoom call don't lock their front doors <laughs> on occasion, right? But uh, that is uh, something that uh, I wish that Jane and Finch, that we can, uh, you know, not have these kind of situations kind of tear, tear down the neighborhood, but that's why we have to work hard together to try to improve the community. <clears throat> okay, so I get rid of all that kind of stuff. And, and also an, another hallmark of growing up in the community is like just having feeling of being, the feelings of being labeled, feeling isolated, uh, you know, being discriminated on where you come from not just having, not being a person of color, not only being, oh, I'm a Vietnamese guy or I'm a black guy, but I'm also from Jane Finch in a poor, bad neighborhood that's kind of had like, you know, that's run rife with gangs. So it's really hard to fight all that stuff. <clears throat> okay, so now I'll get into uh, media representation. So obviously we had decades of uh, negative media coverage because of the shootings and, and gangs and drugs, kind of like the community is known for those things, unfortunately. Um, but that's not all we, we have in the community. We have so much things going on, but, but because people outside of the community who may not have an opportunity to visit Jane and Finch, they will get their information from the mainstream media or from the news or from the general public. And these are the kind of themes that are always re repeated and perpetuated. So, you know, it's very hard to fight those stereotypes and they become stereotypes and very strong. So every time you hear a situation, you know, on the news and people are, or like I heard the shooting Jane Finch, they're like, well, they're not surprised. And that's kind of sad. <clears throat> All right. And uh, so my experience, I'm not gonna give like, you know, official stats or anything, but I've seen throughout the 
throughout the decades living here, a lot of the issues that happen over time, you know, I lived through the summer of the gun. That was in 2005 when uh, there was an increase in gun deaths. Uh, I think it doubled from the previous year. So the media gave it this great big label. We did have uh, unfortunate uh, high profile incidents of uh, young people uh, 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 being shot and killed in the community. Uh, one of them was uh, Jordan Manners, who was shot and killed in C.W. Jeffries in 2007. In the, and I think it made the news because it was the first time that a, a, a student or a, a child was killed on school property on the Toronto, Toronto District School Board. And I actually went to C.W. Jeffries too. Uh, which was a pretty good school back then. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I've had firsthand experience, you know, have a lot of experience uh, commenting in the media about this. I knew Jordan's mom. Uh, uh, she was part of the Fifth Estate documentary that I worked on. Unfortunately, her parts were cut out. But uh, yeah, so it's very hard to fight the stereotypes in Jane and Finch. All right. So let's get into how do we engage residents? All right. So what we did, remember, before social media existed, what we did is recruiting volunteers to give their time, you know, to provide labor, manpower, uh, you know, to write stories, maybe take pictures, uh, you know, and act as citizen journalists. So back then we were doing a lot of things that now have terms, but back then they never had terms. So citizen journalism is actually a very powerful thing, a uh, powerful thing that, um, that we can do to change the reputation of the neighborhood. So back then, if you have the mainstream media controlling the narrative, because anything you hear about Jane Finch is what CP24 says, CBC, Toronto Star, Toronto Sun, that is where people consume their information. So now that we have citizen journalism, we can have people, residents in the community take control, do the stories that they wanna do, represent themselves, you know, uh, in the, using the internet to kind of get their message across and you know, tell positive stories about the community, showcasing different cultures, showcasing all the, the highlights, the beautiful side of Jane and Finch. So what we did is we take our own video cameras, we taped our own stories and we put them on the web and uh, it found an audience. And eventually when YouTube came around, we started populating our channel with uh, positive stories of Jane and Finch. So I encourage everyone to go check out my website, janefinch.com. There's like a lot of videos there and a lot of stories. So if you wanna learn about Jane and Finch, you can come check out the videos. Uh, and not only did we cover stories, we did stories like tree plantings, election coverage, success stories, and also interviews. We also interviewed like some celebrities as well. And what, some of the things that I told my volunteers, mostly young people, is like, you can be anything you want to be. You don't have you don't have to limit yourself. If you're a journalist, you're a journalist. You're a journalist starting from today. And if you want to reach out to someone and interview them, all you got to do is ask. And, uh, you know, I did that early on in the, the early days of the website. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with an artist named Maestro Fresh West. He was actually one of the most, he's considered the godfather of uh, rap in Canada. He pre, uh, preceded Drake. But anyways, I, I knew a Maestro, I met him somewhere. So I called him up. I'm like, I'm starting this website. Can you uh, come, come, come by and do an interview for me? He actually drove all the way to Jane and Finch and we filmed it in my friend's basement. This is like almost 20 years ago. So that really showed me that, yeah, you know, you, the, the power of positive thinking and just reach out to people and you can get things done. It's not that hard. All right. And let's uh, let's see. So, you know, to engage youth is we're tapping into their volunteer, their volunteerism, their passion, their love for the neighborhood, because a lot of everybody who's from Jane Finch has this sense of pride because you're used to being the underdog and always being looked down or stepped on. And everybody has this feeling that I wanna show them that my neighborhood is not as bad as everyone thinks it is. And even today, like I have that feeling, my mom has that feeling, you know, a lot of all my neighbors have that feeling that they wanna contribute and make the community a better place. So what we did is have that digital platform, that website and that outlet to kind of empower residents to have a voice. And so they can, you know, express their concerns directly to the public and not be filtered through the media. Also, you know, sometimes the media can do can give coverage, but they only provide like sound bites, like two or three minute sound bites. So, but with the website, we can go on and on and have a, you know, we can discuss the topic at length and just have like a 30 minute video on a certain topic. So let's see. Okay, so uh, with the today, the video, uh, the website has kind of slowed down a bit. We don't do so much local coverage, but we do do um, larger stories from time to time. I uh, had the opportunity of doing a, a podcast uh, about a, a a trans person named Ziva, and she's actually Kurdish citizen um, from Syria who escaped 
uh, past ISIS checkpoints to get to Canada. So doing a podcast with her and to hearing about her journey was like so crazy. And to be able to share that through my website was just uh, I'm really grateful for that opportunity and to share other stories. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, so 20 years later, this the website's still around. It's going to be a permanent resource as long as I pay the, the web bills. But, uh, you know, you can, you check out our YouTube channel. We have like over 16 million views now and, uh, over 6,000 subscribers. I know the Halton Hills YouTube channel is going to catch up to us eventually. <laughs> so keep at it. I encourage you guys. And um, yeah, so my takeaway would be that anyone can do this. You don't have, you don't need all the resources in the world. You just need that, that passion and that drive. Uh, um, social media tools and smartphones now like uh, democratize, uh, you know, uh, the voice of people. So now anyone can say anything. Anyone can just jump on Twitter and say something and be heard. So I encourage everyone to take advantage of those tools. You know, whatever issues, if there's a pressing issue in your community in Halton Hills, you can gather people together, uh, work together, pool resources, and then get your message out there. So working together and getting out there. And the three things I would just say to, to you to close off is to be real, be there, and be proud. So that is my, uh, my, is my clock right? Because I don't know if it's at the, it says 7.57, must be wrong. Is that correct? No, I think we're good. You said half an hour, so you're on time. Oh, okay. So I do have a, a short two minute clip before I get to the Q&A. Let me try to share that with everybody, please. One second. Uh, let's see. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, one second. Let's see if I can share the video screen. Okay. And I will share that and play it. All my Jennifer's people. <laughs> it's the story of janefinch.com, and they're fighting to improve the image of the place they call Jane Finch are trying to combat the bad rap. He uses the power of the media to empower and promote the Jane Finch youth in a positive manner. Just over a year ago, a young man decided he had had enough of his neighborhood's bad rap, and so he decided to do something about it with some good rap. Jane Dash But I wanted to it anyway, and Mark Sims and Paul Noyan are perfect for the job. They both grew up here. Noyan and Sims are trying to change the community's reputation by creating opportunities themselves. They've launched a website, janefinch.com. He has transformed this grassroots project into a national success story. Janefinch.com in the studio with us. You know, it's not easy to get teens to check out a website to learn about the history of where they live. But if you put something interesting alongside all that educational material, they just might find themselves entertained and a little wiser along the way. Well, pay tags along with the creators of a site where music videos made with local artists are put online to reach a broader audience and create a sense of community. It's one of the most famous and some would say notorious neighborhoods in all of Canada, but we are shedding some new light on it with the help of the creator and executive producer of www.jane-finch.com. Paul and Mark say what's needed is more programs and after-school activities to keep kids busy. So I decided to make like a, a central resource for the area. It's a beautiful area, so you got the kids outside playing. JaneFinch.com. What's cool about your website is that you built it to, I guess, um, combat negative stereotypes about a particular community. Paul has received high praise for his fight against racism from political leaders such as the previous Minister of Multiculturalism, Dr. Hetty Fry, and former Prime Minister of Canada, Joe Clark. JaneFinch.com doing up real home now to some who are harnessing the power of the web to try to change lives. Jane-Finch.com. The young people behind the site hope when you'll visit, you'll do more than just check out the videos and take a look at the positive stories about the Jane and Finch community. Jane-Finch.com. I'm never going to forget that. It's like it's tattooed on my head. This is all my Jane Finch people. <laughs> Hi, we're back. Did, uh, did the video come through okay? Oh, I see some applause. Thank you. Uh, I can't hear it, but I see it. That's I really appreciate that. I guess it works. So that video was made like 15 years ago uh, and 20 pounds ago. Um, but we do have updated ones on YouTube for, for if you want to check out the new videos. So yeah, I really appreciate everyone attending. Um, if you want to learn more about the community, please, you know, by all means, visit janefinch.com or just come down to the neighborhood. If you're, if you're down in the area, give me a call and then I'll take you on a personal guided tour. Uh, no charge at all. But uh, now, like, if anyone has any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer anything, any questions you can throw out my way. So please uh, go ahead. 
Yeah, so if anyone has a question, feel free to throw it in the chat box now. Um, I had one I thought we could get started with, Paul. Um, you mentioned that when you launched the website, social media wasn't a thing. Um, and then obviously you've now gone onto YouTube. I was just wondering, have you noticed that social media has really changed anything about um, whether community journalism or just um, the fact that the media was controlling the narrative so much? Um, has that really changed now that social media has come about? It has changed a huge deal. So yeah, so what I failed to mention is back then having the website, it wasn't quite social media yet because social media is like a two-way conversation. And back then it was only one way where the website is just speaking out and people receiving the message. So yeah, back then it's just like, you know, in a way we're controlling our own message, but with now with social media tools and you can tools, you can have anyone that can contribute, anyone could say, people can interact with each other. Um, back then, the website was actually the dominant kind of platform for the community, but now I've seen it kind of grow where there's so many new organizations and new uh, grassroots initiatives uh, pop up and they have their own Facebook page, they have their own YouTube channel, and we try to support people. I mean, all I guess we're still here because we have that lo longevity aspect and having uh, being a trusted and respected source. Um, but uh, yeah, I love seeing all the new voices and just just having people have that ability to kind of speak their mind and express themselves. It's been so hugely important for myself because I, when I grew up, I was like kind of a shy introverted kid. I'm still like shy and nervous doing this, uh, <laughs> this lecture thing, but uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. And, I, and so the internet is a true blessing and I would encourage, you know, all the residents and especially the, the ones who are a little bit shy and introverted that you have tools right in front of you that you can use to express yourself and don't use, being shy as an excuse anymore. <laughs> and actually the two questions that just came in are very similar and kind of along that vein. Um, so for everyone watching, um, we've had a question about, um, you know, if somebody wanted to start uh, a career like this today and is around that same age, um, you know, what would Paul's advice be for giving voice to a neighborhood? And someone else asked, um, what advice would you give someone who might want to start something like this today? Um, so Perfect. Paul, if you want to share. So here with my, uh, well, great. I'm thankful for, for, for whoever that, uh, for Tony, for uh, mentoring a fellow Jane Finch kid. I, I wish you were there when I was uh, growing up back in the day, but we need more people like you. Um, yes, you know, having a career in video storytelling, you know, first, it's always helpful to find a mentor, hopefully someone in the industry. But if that's not uh, easily read, uh, ready, you know, you can reach out to people who are doing similar things. And there's a lot of like, you know, journalism broadcast schools that take in interns. You can offer yourself as a volunteer or intern to like a local paper. Because there's local newspapers that still exist or websites like such as myself. Um, but, you know, just learning when I learned myself, I just borrowed, a, actually how I got into video, I borrowed a video production book from the library. <laughs> So that's how I got started and learned about video, all due to the library. So there's a huge resource right there. And I know some libraries can loan out equipment and there's facilities there and, and rooms that you can use. A lot of the, some of the interviews and things that I've conducted was actually borrowing the basement room in the local library. So library is a tremendous resource uh, for sure. But, uh, you know, reaching out to people, you would be surprised. You can reach out to some famous host that's from Jane Finch you can like send them an email or a tweet or whatever you call it and you'll be surprised they'll get back to you and they'll maybe provide some resources or direct you to a better place or actually you know invite the youth in to tour around tour tour around CBC or Toronto Star or whatever so definitely give that a shot what advice gives someone when to start something like this so yes, I mean, uh, now that the tools are readily available, you just have to open up a page or you know sign up for some social media accounts. But I think it's more like finding a common ground, finding something that everybody or like a lot of people can work towards that they're passionate about. So whatever the issues are in Halton, I'm not really familiar with what's going on too much in Halton. I just, I, I've been there a few years ago. Uh, you know, someone on the call is a, a longtime coworker of mine that lives in Georgetown. And I visited Little Georgetown Theater to watch a play there. It was really cool, really nice. I probably was the only guy from Jane Finch in that place at that day, but it was a wonderful experience. <laughs> so thank you for welcoming me there. And I would love to visit uh, Halton Hills in the future again and, and drop by the library, of course. But um, yeah, gathering people, like-minded people, and you know, pooling your resources and your energies. And if you have something 
say and you find other passionate people, you utilize their skills. And if someone's good at communicating, someone's good at public relations, someone's good at public speaking, someone's good at the technical aspects, and you work together and you can build something very strong, whether it's a newsletter or YouTube channel or whatever it is, or TikTok. That's something new and that's kind of beyond me. I'm not in the TikTok land, but uh, I've seen all kinds of people of all ages getting involved and really using that platform to kind of entertain. But also when if they have a message, using that that very popular platform to communicate their message. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, what do you think is the current image of Jane Finch? Do you feel it has improved? Hmm, <laughs> well, doing this for almost 20 years, I mean, we still have that rep. Uh, we have that street rep. Uh, you know, sometimes if I meet someone from outside the community, they still will have misconceptions and I don't blame them because uh, if they don't know any better, that's they get what they get from the mass media. Uh, has it improved? I think it has improved by leaps and bounds, but we still have a lot of work to do. And this is not something that's gonna be fixed. You can't fix the reputation overnight. And it's, I've been at it for 20 years and probably another 20 years, unfortunately, but this is a, a life, lifelong commitment to your community. Uh, as long as you're living and you're there you know, I have people who are ex-residents and actually, you know, email me and send nice words and even send some donations and stuff for equipment. So people really have uh, really fond memories of the community. But I think uh, it's improved and, you know, proof of it improve, proof. Here's proof of it improving. You have a guy from Jane Finch um, as a guest speaker for Halton Hills uh, YouTube channel. So there you go. That's proof enough. Uh, and that's uh, we can only go up from there. What are personal hopes and dreams for Jane Finch? What's the next challenge? So my hope and, and dream is actually when you hear Jane Finch, you don't hear, you don't think, oh, there's something going on there. There's like a, some incident there. It's actually, when you hear Jane Finch, you're like, oh, wow, that's a place for all these young people, talented people, athletes or a politician or an artist or, or a leader. That's what I would love to hear that Jane Finch is known for producing these fine young people and they're, they're going out into the world and making an impact and not letting the community, you know, the challenges kind of stop them from becoming who they are and, and, and reaching their potential. So I hope that Jane Finch can be in the future known as like, wow, that's a place, uh, it's a great place. I, I wanna, you know, visit there. I wanna learn more about the people. I wanna connect with them and I wanna do great things with people of Jane Finch. So that's my hope. Okay, how has the pandemic changed how the website is used? I guess, well, I guess maybe traffic would go up a little bit <laughs> because uh, no one can get around anywhere. And if they're curious about Jane and Finch, uh, we did, uh, my younger brother is a photographer and he did some interesting photos uh, during the pandemic. So he went around Jane and Finch taking pe people, pictures of people wearing masks at the bus stop in the mall. So we have a, a cool a set of photographs in the, in the picture gallery uh, related to the pandemic. Um, but I think, uh, you know, it's been, it's changed how we all worked. You know, we're doing this by Zoom. If this was not the pandemic, I'd probably drive all the way to Halton Hills and 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 and, and give this talk in person. And hopefully I'll I'll get welcomed back if they if they like me <laughs> enough. I can uh, welcome back to uh, visit you guys and 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 then have a follow-up chat. But uh yeah, I mean the pandemic has hit us particularly hard and we do have higher rates of the COVID here, but the uh, the, I think the government is slowly rolling out vaccines here. We have like a site here and then the Downsview uh, base is really nearby. So they have a big uh, immunization site there. So hopefully we can get the word out and more people will attend. Uh, right now they're just pushing through like the, the certain age groups, right? And I'm yet to get there. So um, I'll be patient and let everyone get their thing first. Okay, the community is very resilient. Are we documenting? Yes, so... Uh, Okay, I'll just read it out. How is the community coping with COVID? The community is also very resilient. Are you documenting their stories to highlight the disproportionate impact on racial communities? So I touched upon that uh, briefly. There are a lot of mainstream media actually covering that. And we do have a lot of grassroots uh, groups that are very vocal about this issue. So uh, I haven't been too much involved with COVID. Uh, I've written some articles recently uh, about other topics. But uh, I think a lot of people are doing a good job <laughs> and they don't need me to you know, add my two cents. But if they need me, my help to amplify their stories or to retweet something, I'm, I'm always there to do that. But definitely the community is very resilient. And that is a, a word that, is, that really describes people in Jane Finch and especially youth. 
that they're innately resilient because of the challenges they have to overcome, you know, whether it's not having the resources, the money, the connections, those kind of things to, to help you along with school and career and all that kind of stuff. People are always fighting for an opportunity, but it's because of that drive and that passion that they work hard and they fight for opportunities because other people might have it kind of easy and they kind of, you know, kind of too chill, too relaxed. But in Jane Finch, everybody is like, is hustling in some way or another. Uh, and hopefully they can use the energies to hustle in a positive manner, which is I consider myself an online hustler in a way. York University is near Jane Finch. Are there any connection partnerships with them? I think uh, York has uh, partnerships with like, uh, they have, uh, they partner with, I think, TD Group in York Gate Mall. And there's some connections there. I actually sit on the alumni board at York University. And I'm also sitting as a, on the Senate, which is kind of weird because <laughs> I, I used to sneak into York as a high school kid and uh, filming my videos there because it's like, you know, indoors and it was like we had electricity and bathrooms and stuff. So I made a lot of Kung Fu movies at York University sneaking in uh, bypassing security. But uh, York is, uh, yeah, they they want to improve relationships and they, they know that they are staple in the community. So, you know, having a guy like me sitting on the board uh, is, uh, I think, a really good step forward. And I think we need to get more people involved, more people from the community in those kind of positions, uh, participating, sitting on boards uh, and, and being at that, having a seat at the table. So that's very important. Barbara, thank you for positive information. Please do come back. Well, thank you very much. I definitely will come back and uh, I'm available anytime. Uh, one thing that people don't know is I, I used to have my web, my cell phone number on the website for nearly 20 years. So that's why uh, anybody can call me. Some interesting stories that, you know, I have uh, someone from the media reach out, but also some of the highlights were like, I had this guy, he actually just was released from jail for I don't know what, but he just called me randomly in the evening a couple of years ago. So I just, I talked to this guy for like one hour, some guy who just got out of jail and he told me that he, you know, he knew about the website and it gave him some inspiration. And I told him, I thanked him for, you know, visiting, checking us out and giving me a call. And I told him to stay out of trouble from now on. But it just goes to show that, you know, putting yourself out there and having a story and putting your contacts out there, you can reach a broad audience and meet people that I, I've met people that I, I never would have imagined, you know, from the governor general, I was able to, you know, I got an award from uh, the prime minister uh, many years ago. So, oh, here are some pictures I will uh, actually want to share while I close this off. And let me uh, share some pictures and uh, let's see. Let's see if I can share this. Okay. So sorry for the, uh, you know, just going all over the place. I wanted the presentation to be a little bit more organized, but uh, I'm just going to share some behind the scenes photos. This is when we we're doing music videos back in the day, editing on a Pentium. I mean, if you look at the computer monitor, you'll know it's back in the day, okay? <laughs> right? And Dennis can attest to that, uh, who's on the call that we, uh, we had to do video, video, we're using video tapes back in the day. All right, let me try to get the next photo. I just want to share some. So these are some screenshots from the music videos that we did with uh, uh, some artists in the area from Jane and Finch. And this is another one. Uh, this video probably has like a million views on YouTube just for your information. So the guy's really popular. Unfortunately, the artists are the ones that are popular. Nobody knows who I am, so that kind of sucks. I think I should get into rapping myself. And this is one of our first interviews uh, with the, on the right, far right side is Dwight Drummond. And he's the guy who used to live down the street. And he was actually one of the reporters, the first reporters who gave my website some airtime on uh, City TV when he was at City TV. This is like around 2005. So it's been a great opportunity. I'm still friends with him today. And uh, he's a great guy. So for people, you know, who want to get into video, uh, video storytelling, like reach out to Dwight. He's a great guy. And he always comes back to the neighborhood, gives talks to the kids. He, he has never really left. His spirit is always here. And this is just some uh, media uh, rounds that we did. This is my best friend, Mark, sitting beside a former uh, NDP leader, Howard Hampton. This is probably circa 2005. And that's with Ann Romer. Ann Romer, they're doing a live show. This is Mark uh, showing off how strong he is. <laughs> and these are some of the behind the scenes clips of us uh, covering stories in the area. So this was a Kitty Carabana in, in, uh, in front of York Gate Mall in the parking lot. So this is us doing our local news coverage for the website. 
this is a nice, nice photo of when uh, Maestro Fresh West came down to visit us in Jane Finch and we filmed uh, his, his interview in the basement of my friend's house. So it was really cool having a celebrity in, in the midst. And I actually was a little bit trembling because it's the first time I had like a famous person like a couple of feet away from me. And this is us doing some election coverage. And we had a, a former Toronto mayor, David Miller, come by the community and we did an interview with him. And this is him showing off his chain of office. <laughs> and some more behind the scenes photos. Uh, this, I'll give a quick story about this. So we do a lot of positive coverage, but we also are not, we don't shy away from the tragedies in the community. So this is kind of, kind of the benefits of having your own platform. So unfortunately, you see the family there, uh, their son was uh, um, uh, shot to death. And it was, uh, he was 15, I believe a 15 year old kid at the time. And they were, you know, appealing to the media to kind of uh, asking the public to come forward with any information to find the killers. And uh, at that time we were the actual, we, we uh, conducted the whole interview and organized it. Uh, the girl on the right is actually a volunteer reporter for my website. And uh, we also invited the mainstream media, but uh, you know, they're all on their knees <laughs> trying to uh, get the sound. But this kind of shows that how much power that community media has and that we can empower other, other residents if they have something very important to share that we will give them as much time as they need. And we'll put the whole interview, whether it's 25 minutes so they can express their feelings, they can appeal to the public and not just get the one or two minute soundbite from CB24. So that is the power of local media. And if you have an important issue, like say in Halton Hills, you have all these tools at your disposal to take advantage of. So I highly encourage it. This is me and Mark. Then we worked at Fifth Estate back in the day and uh, 20 pounds ago. And this is uh, another highlight of mine a couple of years ago. Uh, that's my friend in the middle. His name is Jamal Campbell. He was a Toronto Argonauts linebacker. And the year that the Argos won the Great Cup. So he called me up. He's like, hey, Paul, I, so each player, when they win the championship, you get the cup for a day. So he's from Jane and Finch. He's like, I got the cup. I can bring it to Jane and Finch. What should I do? I was like, well, let's uh, bring it to the intersection and I'll help you get on the news and all that kind of stuff. So we were there at the corner with this big cup and a lot of people who got off the bus were like, what the heck is this? They all rushed him. They wanted selfies. They're like, this is so cool. We have like a champion championship and the gray cup in the heart of Jane and Finch. So that was a crazy, crazy moment. And this is just a screenshot of me uh, doing an interview. So here's uh, the photo that I want to cap it off with. This is me and my best friend. He's been along my side, uh, my next door neighbor. We've done the, we grew up together. We did the website, you know, since 2004. This picture was about 2007, so about almost 15 years ago. So we're just two guys, two best friends. We got an Asian guy and a black guy, and we're just trying to make our community a better place using the internet, internet and using video, and you know. And just being in the community, you have a friend that's a different color. We don't even see color. That's the beauty and the nature of uh, Jane and Finch. And uh, working hard over the years, and uh, I was very proud to see that my friend uh, just two years ago uh, finally got a medal from the governor general. So this is us in Jane and Finch, 2007. Fast forward almost 20 years, 15 to 20 years later, boom. Same guys, well, he's kind of bald now. But now we're, we, we got uh, some uh, recognition for our work. And this is the, the year that uh, Mark, we were at Redo Hall and Mark got uh, recognition for his work in Jane Finch. Um, and uh, the governor general at the time was Julie Payette. And I know she's in the hot water for some things, right? <laughs> we don't have to go there, but she was nice to us. Uh, maybe she knew we're from Jane and Finch, so she has to be nice to us, right? But uh, so yeah, that's it. This is, uh, I'm, that's, I'm ending off my presentation and this is the final image I'd like to leave in your mind that you know, two kids from Jane and Finch that maybe people never gave a thought or maybe thought never had a chance actually could accomplish something good for the community. And uh, I would hope that uh, we can continue to build young le leaders in the community and not just in Jane and Finch, but in other communities like Halton Hills. I wanna hear about young people doing great stuff there and, and I wanna be able to learn from them and visit and see what you guys are up to. So I uh, really appreciate all this. Thank you very much. I'm <laughs> so glad that not that you guys are still here. Uh, I don't see empty boxes. <laughs> so I really, really appreciate it. Thank you to the Halton Hills uh, Public Library. You guys are doing a bang up job. 
and uh, I'm waiting and I'll, hopefully I can add to your hit counter on your YouTube channel. <laughs> so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I, I feel very blessed to share my story. And thank you again for the opportunity to share a little bit about my story with uh, the, the community residents of Halton. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, Paul, um, for sharing um, your story, the community story, and uh, for just also trying to inspire youth to get involved and for everyone to get involved in representing their community and uh, the issues that they really care about. Um, so on behalf of the Halton Hills Public Library, the Friends of the Halton Hills Public Library, and CFUW Georgetown, um, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Now for everyone else, um, if you enjoyed tonight's event, um, please note that we have David Chapman joining us on Wednesday, May 5th, um, and his lecture will be Exploring the Birds of Ontario. Um, so registration for that event is now live through our website. Um, at this time, CFUW Georgetown members can stay on the call and the business meeting will begin momentarily. Uh, and then lastly, just one more big thank you to Paul again for joining us. Um, and thank you to everyone who is in the audience tonight. Um, and once again, thank you to our sponsors, the Friends of the Halton Hills Public Library and CFEW Georgetown for helping to make tonight possible. Um, so I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their evenings. Mm -hmm.